Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Nate Kredich, who is Vice President of Residential Market Development with the U.S. Green Building Council. Nate, how you doing? I'm doing well, Kemp. Good to be with you. Good to talk to you. I thought it would be a good time to catch up because next week a lot of our listeners will be in San Francisco for, is this the 11th Green Build? I think that's right. Green Build is roughly dated to when lead kicked off in the marketplace, and we're right at 11 or 12 years. So we're at either 11 or 12. Okay. And last year you were just north of the U.S. in Toronto. First, let's just talk about your anticipation as far as the crowd, the attendance, and the number of exhibitors, that kind of thing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you bet. It's funny to think about we've been doing Green Bull as long as we have, and we've never truly done it on the West Coast. It's mm-hmm. always been the East Coast. The furthest West we've come are places like Denver and Phoenix never in California. So it just it just feels like we're coming home in San Francisco where you know, so much of the movement began. As you mentioned, last year we were in Toronto. Toronto was a wonderful place for us to sort of demonstrate how global this movement has, has gone. At the same time, I think for our, our U.S. attendees, there were some, you know, maybe a few challenges in getting there. So, you know, the idea that we're going to be doing it in a place like San Francisco, very accessible, easy to get to, we're expecting huge things. Last year, our attendance was right around 23,000 folks, and our expectation is closer to 30 and, and maybe even north of that. So we, we, we think we're going to have just a, a heck of a show. All right. You know, the, the, the type of people that attend Green Build, I think, uh, evolves over time or even maybe even shifts depending on where you have it. I guess you're probably anticipating that being on the West Coast, you'll certainly have a lot of the environmentally focused attendees and probably still have a lot of A and D. So it'd probably be a good mix of attendees, wouldn't you think? I think so. I think from a residential perspective also, and, and our residential attendees don't travel as well as some of the commercial architects and designers. So I, I think we're going to have a real terrific representation from home builders, from contractors, from related service providers, because there's so much activity going on you know, in the Bay Area. I'll give you a, a good example is one of the sort of breakout sessions that we've got this year is around affordable housing, and there's just a, a massive amount of affordable housing development work going on in that Bay Area. You know, I think, again, we're really kind of bringing this conference uh, to a place where the activity is already there. We have a pretty well-educated attendee base, but it's also always an opportunity to bring more people under the tent and and kind of show them what sustainability is all about. All right, so if you would, people that are going are packing their bags and they're going to listen to this, and and we might be able to help steer them to make sure they go to the right sessions, the right education track, go see the right speakers. Give us a little bit of the highlights in that area, if you would. Yeah, you bet. You know, our opening plenary this year, we, we kick off Wednesday morning with our own version of, of the MSNBC show, Morning Joe. So we've got Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. And, you know, the timing of this is not at all an accident. We really want to sort of put a, a show together almost on stage with those two orchestrating it, talking about, you know, today's elections, the impact this is going to have on the economy, on the environment, you know, on the job situation that we're all kind of wondering about. So the two of them are really going to hold court that very first morning, and we're going to have a number of separate panels. We're going to have folks like Cory Booker, who's the mayor of Newark, along with uh, Biz Stone, who is the co-founder of Twitter. You know, folks are going to be talking about kind of how these policy implications are affecting uh, the technology sector, how they're affecting our education, how they're affecting uh, other policy issues that we're, we're looking at these days. I think a big draw for, for folks is going to be Paul Hawken. He's also going to be in one of the Morning Joe panels, you know, Paul is a sort of widely renowned environmentalist and doesn't actually speak very much anymore. He's uh, really kind of cut back his speaking engagements, but we're thrilled to have him join us on stage. Some people may not remember that Paul Hawkins is the author who wrote the book that got Ray Anderson fired up and got him on the track at Interface that he got on, and Paul did a, a eulogy for Ray Anderson. So, uh, he, you know, he, he's a really sharp guy. I've heard him speak before in Atlanta, and he's brilliant. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think that'll be, you know, really terrific. And then I think we're going to have a political edge to it. We've got George Pataki, who's the former governor of New York. We've got Gavin Newsom, who's the former mayor of San Francisco. He's now the lieutenant governor of California. Again, sort of talking about what the the implications of of the election are uh, around uh, major policy issues. So I think that's really kind of a neat way to get things kicked off. A lot of inspiration, but also very much practical as to what we can expect over the next four years. So that's really going to get us kicked off Wednesday And then the exhibit floor opens, and, uh, you know, we have 
Uh, our largest exhibit floor ever. Not totally clear on the total of uh, the number of square footage, but we're you know in north of a thousand different exhibitors. So um, those who have been in places like Chicago and Toronto will quickly realize the floor is even larger than in those two places. So I think there's an awful lot for people to look at and and really kind of look and touch and feel as to what's you know happening in the marketplace and. Um, we're thrilled with kind of the exhibitor interest that we've had. And then the sessions start. So, you know, we've got education that spans all different areas of sustainability, from commercial to residential to schools. We've got some master speakers that are really pretty interesting. I'll, I'll talk about one in a minute. And that'll take us all the way to Friday. And then the Friday closing plenary is something that we're always really excited about. We've got folks like Bill McDonough, who is the architect behind the Cradle, the, the Cradle certification. So he's going to talk a little bit about what he sees coming down the pike. So really a high-powered roster of folks between the speakers and the programming. I think there's just an awful lot for people to get out of the out of Greenville this year. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a, a full ticket. I'm looking forward to it. Just real quick before we run out of time, tell us a little bit. I know you focus day-to-day about the, the whole lead for home and making sure the program continues to grow. Give us a quick update on that, if you would. Well, we, we continue to grow sort of meteorically. We've certified over 26,000 homes now. We've got about 90,000 in the queue. We've now certified homes in just about every state, save one, which is North Dakota. So if you've got any your listeners in North Dakota, you know, get out there and certify your lead home. But we've really kind of expanded the reach. It's now reaching globally. And we're looking more intently at the existing home sector going forward. And one of kind of the neat draws about Greenville this year, we, we have our own set of residential programming on Thursday called the Residential Summit. These are sessions that are just, again, expressly focused on developers and uh, builders for the residential sector. And we've got our master speaker, a guy named Tony Fidel. And, and if you don't know Tony, you might know his product, which is called the Nest Thermostat. Uh, he's the founder of Nest. And he's an ex-Apple guy. He actually was one of the first designers of the iPod. Mm-hmm. And he's put his sort of technology design roots to work in helping to solve energy efficiency issues. So this Nest thermostat has really become the rage over the last year, helping people to save energy. And so Tony's going to join us and kind of give his thoughts about sort of the marriage between technology and sustainability. And, you know, as we, USGBC, starts looking more at the existing home sector, And we're really excited about folks like Tony and the developments that they've got going on to help really kind of transform that market. So I think there's going to be just a little bit for everybody at at this year's Green Build. All right, great. Well, I look forward to being there and catching up with you. Again, we've been talking to Nate Credich, who is the Vice President of Residential Market Development with the U.S. Green Building Council, about Green Build, which is next week in San Francisco, starting Tuesday night, running through Friday. And you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.